Welcome back. I wanted to take a few minutes to share a section of a book. The name of the book is Space, Time, and Medicine. It was written by Dr. Larry Dossi. He's a physician, he's an author, and this book was written many years ago, almost 40 years ago. It was published in 1982. What's interesting about most of this book, it appears as though it was written yesterday. It is relevant, it speaks to where medicine has been and where medicine is, what we think about health, what we think about consciousness, how we approach alternative medicine, complementary medicine, natural medicine, conventional medicine, it really speaks to many aspects of what really is important in the modern day world as it applies to us today. And what's interesting is that, again, was written almost 40 years ago. So again, the book is, is many pages. And the section, it, the chapter I wanted to read a section of is called Consciousness and Medicine. What lies ahead? And the subsection is Holistic Healthcare. Some gentle admonitions. Consider the impact the new views may have on our concept of self-responsibility in healthcare. Self-responsibility has become the clarion call of the so-called holistic healthcare movement. More than any other single factor, perhaps the reliance on self and de-emphasis of authoritarian medical care distinguishes the holistic endeavor. The holistic movement has rightfully criticized the traditional role of the patient as a supplicating childlike figure and the costly, depersonalized, technological approach of modern medicine has received sharp fire. But the new self-care methodologies have arisen primarily not because of these objections to the present system, but because new concepts of self-responsibility have evolved. However fertile the influence of the holistic movement may prove to be, in its shrill insistence on the concept of self, the holistic healthcare movement is inconsistent with the deepest meaning of the word. In the foregoing chapters, we have seen that the concept of an isolated self is illusory. Interaction of selves is not merely optional, but obligatory. No matter the level of scrutiny of the self, whether at the macroscopic level of the interpersonal at the microscopic level of the biological chemical self, or at the subatomic level, the, uh, the non-interacting, isolated self is an indefensible construct, at best, like the flow of time, a psychological illusion. For all its attributes, the holistic healthcare movement in its present philosophical form will never achieve true transcendence of the present system of healthcare because it invokes the same world model. Human beings are seen primarily as distinct entities who exist quite apart from other selves and from other physicians. The holistic healthcare model is thus dis distinguished, not in kind, but in degree, from the orthodox worldview of traditional medicine. The question is not who wields authority in the healthcare game, nor even what the rules of the game might be. The crucial distinction have to do not with authority, but with no less than how the universe behaves. And thus, as the preceding chapters have attempted to make clear what is meant by self. The confusion over self and other pervades the holistic movement. For example, in some circles, it is judged a sign of weakness or failure to take a pill or to submit to any therapeutic maneuver that is purveyed by the medical establishment. Ideally, it is claimed one should stay healthy through one's own strategies, relying on orthodox medicine only as a last resort, even if then. Certain health aids thus become acceptable while others are condemnable. The credo has become chaotic. For instance, Vitamins are not of themselves valuable, it depends on their source, whether organic or not. Moreover, the dosage is crucial. A complex system of beliefs 
has arisen regarding all chemicals, including the water and food we have, we ingest in the very air we breathe. Many such admonitions will undoubtedly prove of value, while others will not. Yet regardless of the future validation or failure of the therapeutic principles that are espoused by holistic healthcare movement, the entire emphasis seems flawed in the light of the new views we have examined because the foundation of the credo of the holistic movement is, after all, that therapy is an object, something to be taken, ingested, or participated in. But in NERB-T, a holistic acceptability, is as real an object as a penicillin injection or an x-ray beam. An organically extracted vitamin is as real an object as one that is mass-produced from basic chemical components. Naturally grown foods are objects in the same sense that a pesticide is an object. The holistic movement commits the same failure as the traditional system of medical care by placing primacy on the objectivity of healthcare. Whether one prefers to be called a client rather than a patient, a bone of contention in some holistic circles, both patient and client remain objects, objects to whom and for whom acts are done. Regardless of whether pills are eschewed or whether naturally derived medication is preferred, both are objects still. From the perspective of the new view, no fundamental distinctions have been made, for both systems remain anchored in a similar, similar world view, characterized by a floundering multitude of separate selves surrounded by a sea of objects, all engulfed by a typically Newtonian universe of cause and effect of push and pull. In spite of a profound personal sympathy of many of the leavening influences wrought by the holistic healthcare movement, I must lovingly chastise it and wish upon it a philosophical maturity it has yet to attain. In many ways, it has strained at a gnat and swallowed a camel. Its opportunity as a truly transformative power will wither as long as it recreates the same basic philosophical errors of the present system. The fundamental issues do not, after all, hinge on pills, pesticides, x-rays, or who does what to whom. I trust it is clear from earlier chapters that we all have roots in the universe, that interpret interpenetration of all matter is the rule, and that the dividing line between life and non-life is illusory and arbitrary. There's only one valid way thus to partake of the universe, whether the partaking is of food, water, the love of another, or indeed a pill. That way is characterized by reverence, a reverence born of a felt sense of participation in the universe, of a kinship with all others and with all matter, seen against the scope of a universal interpenetration Arguments over pills and herb teas or about organic versus artificial therapies begin to sound like the banter of children, a reverential attitude that bespeaks a oneness with the universe can transform the commonest act. In certain holistic circles, the ingestion of caffeine is decried, yet the Japanese have for centuries elevated the simple act of caffeine consumption to the status of the tea ceremony, which has evolved into an astonishingly beautiful expression of spirituality. In the tea ceremony, the meaning of space, time, and person are altered in ways we have previously examined. In the tea ceremony, no one quibbles about caffeine. Is this analogy strained? What does the Japanese tea ceremony have to do with the legitimacy of medical acts of various sorts? In my view, the comparison is valid for any medication or therapeutic act can be partaking of, partaken of in the same way. The great shamans have always known this. We come full circle to my fellow intern Jim, who ceremoniously used the simple act, clipping and burning a lock of hair to save a dying man. It is not the act itself that is crucial, 
but the conscious attitudes that surround it. As the study of the petted and loved rabbits demonstrated, what is ingested is not as important as we usually believe. For the petted, loved rabbits were largely spared the deposition of cholesterol in their heart's arteries, even though they ate the same cholesterol-rich diet as an unloved and unpetted group, a group that was ravaged by the disease. Giving medication, whatever the type, like drinking tea or partaking of food or like clipping a lock of hair from a be bewitched and dying man can be done reverently. It is the sense of reverence, oneness, and unity that allows the power of healing to flower. This is power which I feel all true healers evoke. It is the power we have lost in our age and which we may yet regain through a new understanding of space-time, matter, and self. Dr. Dossi really tries to encapsulate the idea that regardless of what we may take, of what we do, that's not true medicine. That isn't holistic in nature. Interestingly, you could take a cholesterol-lowering drug like a statin, or you can take an alternative therapeutic drug or a natural substance, red yeast rice. Both will do the same exact thing. They will help lower cholesterol. But is that really what matters? Well, the interesting thing is it doesn't because the approach is still the same. It's the separation of ourselves from the holism, the idea of holism. We are part of the universe and the universe is part of us. We're part of nature and nature is us. So we can't necessarily create the distinction between a conventional therapeutic approach, a holistic therapeutic approach, and call them different approaches because in essence they can really be the same thing. Taking a conventional drug as an example I just used with the cholesterol lowering drug and replacing it with, with an alternative that is quote natural doesn't make it holistic. It's ultimately a very similar approach. So my point is holistic really does require more than simply a vitamin that you take because we really can't medicate ourselves to whole health, which is what Dr. Dossi alludes to. Again, the sentence, the, the sentences that he really highlights, or at least I would like to highlight, is it is the sense of reverence, oneness, and unity that allows the power of healing to flower. This is power which I feel all true healers evoke. It is the power we have lost in our age and which we may yet regain through a new understanding of space-time, matter, and self. Some food for thought. I really enjoyed this book. He has a very interesting concept of what he describes time is, and he talks, he really discusses the Newtonian physics, the myopic understanding of what Newtonian physics is, and the construct of holistic understanding of quantum physics, quantum mechanic, mechanics, our understanding of consciousness. He talks about the physical self and our separation from the universe. He's given it a lot of thought. And then, again, this was written 40 years ago, and it applies to us today. I would like to return to another section at another time, reading from Dr. Dossi's book. Please share your thoughts what you think about your idea about holistic healthcare, and what that really means. I have practiced natural holistic healthcare medicine, and I spent a lot of time and I've spent a lot of time really thinking about how taking conventional and replacing it with what we call holistic or alternative isn't really the answer. A lot of food for thought, and again, I hope you enjoyed this section from Dr. Dossi's book, and I look forward to sharing more with you as time goes on. And please subscribe to my channel. I'll be sharing more from Dr. Dossi's book and other books, and we'll take our journey together. Until next time, stay well, be well, 
and I look forward to being with you again.